In this video, you're going to learn how to write the domain and the range of a function in interval notation when you're given a graph. We're going to go through five examples together, and I'm going to show you how this works. See if you can pause the video on some of the problems and try them on your own for practice. So the first thing we want to talk about is, what exactly is the domain and the range? Well, the domain is what are the possible x values and the range are what are the possible y values. And so let's take a look at this first example and I'll show you kind of how I think about it. When I look at the domain, what I do is I, I take like a line or like a, a pencil and I kind of scan from left to right. I call this the horizontal direction or the x direction. And I scan from left to right. And I see like, okay, here it's crossing the graph, it's crossing the graph, crossing the graph, crossing the graph. And it looks like this graph is basically going to the left and the right forever and ever. So what that tells me is that the x's can be anything, all real numbers. And so when we write that, we would say the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the range, those are like what the y values can be. So here what I do is I take a horizontal line and I scan from low to high like that. So I'm scanning from low to high. And you can see this graph's going down forever and ever, but the highest it goes is right here at a y value of zero. So the range is gonna be from negative infinity to zero, and it includes zero. See, it touches right here at the x-axis, so we're gonna use a square bracket because it includes zero. Now, infinity can never reach infinity. That's always gonna be like an open with the parentheses. Okay, let's look at example number two now. What do you think the domain and the range are for this one? Well, again, when I think of domain, I think, what can x be? Well, when I scan across, see it's crossing the graph, then there's a hole, hole here as well, so there's basically a gap here at negative three. Let's write that down. And then you can see it's crossing the graph, and it keeps going to the right forever and ever. So essentially, the domain is all real numbers except for negative three. That's what the possible x values are. So if I was gonna write this, I would go from left to right, so that's negative infinity to negative three, not including negative three, so we use the parentheses, and then it picks up at negative three, not including negative three, all the way to positive infinity. Now if I was gonna do the range, these are the y values, so I take a horizontal line like my forearm here and I go from low to high, and it looks like because these are horizontal lines, the y values can only be here at negative two, and then it jumps to positive two, and it's really just those two numbers. So instead of writing an interval, I would just use this set bracket notation. I would say negative two and positive two, and just draw those curly Q set brackets. Okay, so those are the only Y values. What do you think for number three, domain and range for this one? Hmm, well the domain, again, what can X be? Scanning from left to right, looks like from one to five, so, and it includes one and it includes five, so I would say domain is one to five, using the square brackets because it includes those values. And then the range, what can the y values be? See, low to high, see, I'm going in the y direction, which is like the vertical direction. The lowest it can be is negative two. It includes all these values here up to positive two. So I would say range is negative two to positive two inclusive. Okay, and then what do you think for four and five? Maybe pause the video and try these two for practice. So for number four, what can the domain be? What can the x values be? Now, sometimes people get a little bit confused by this one because you see how this is like a parabola? It's kind of like a U-shaped graph. Sometimes students will say, well, Mario, how do you know this graph doesn't eventually like become like a vertical line? Like it's curving, it's getting like steeper and steeper in a sense. How, come you, how do you know it doesn't just go vertical? Well, with these, it's gonna gradually go to the left and the right forever and ever. So in this case, the domain is gonna be uh, all real numbers, or we could say negative infinity to positive infinity, whereas the range going from low to high, okay, looking at our y values, our vertical direction, this goes down to negative infinity, and it goes all the way up to this negative one. So here we'll say the range is negative infinity to negative one, we're using the square bracket at negative one because it includes negative one. Infinity, remember, is always open. You can't really reach infinity. And then for number five, what do you think for this one? What'd you get for the domain and the range? 
Well, for this one, again, for domain, I think about what can x values be. It's going to be from negative infinity all the way to negative 1. So let's write that down, negative infinity to negative 1, including negative 1. See how it touches negative 1? It's not an open circle. That's closed. And then the range, what can the y values be? We can go from low to high. We're thinking of the vertical direction. And this is going down, down, down forever. So negative infinity, this is going up, up, up forever. And it hits all those y values in between. So it's all real numbers, or you can say negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, the next thing you're going to want to learn is how to find the domain when you're given not the graph, but the equation. And I'll put a video for that right there. So follow me over to that video, and we'll talk about how to find the domain given an equation. I'll see you there.